Would you say hello to a four-day work week? That's what Microsoft employees did during a month-long experiment. Employees were more productive and apparently happier too. So we're asking you, would a four-day work week make you more productive and happy? Vote on our app for at abc10.com slash vote. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, which is overwhelmingly yes. No, wait, we got some breaking news, y'all. Uh, Just in from the Associated Press what? last year for the end quarter. American productivity for workers was down hmm. so, so much that they had to send out a breaking news alert. So I'm just going to supplement <laughs> this story with that because if we just add this four day work week, maybe it'll make us all more productive. Oh, you know what? Not everyone agrees. So, racist, <laughs> it is just another way to pay you less and ultimately replace your job with technology. Wow. The end result, right, you'll be at home with less money. And Mark says, hey, I love working a four day week plus Friday is optional overtime and I have the weekend. You better believe I do a better job because I'm grateful to have it. Let me address race concern. What they do is make you work all of your 40 hours yeah. in four days. So how you get less money? Hit me up on my Facebook. We got to talk about this, right? I'm trying to convince you. It's always a fear. <laughs> Are you good? I'm good now. Okay. <laughs> Let's move now to our top stories, local and national headlines. Rob, get us going with uh, weather forecast. I think Kirsten could carry that entire conversation, <laughs> the pros only, by herself for the next hour. I got you. <clears throat> okay, so I'm out here uh, in the Gilmore backyard. Obviously, you know what I'm going to say because we know the pattern by now. It's going to be dry and sunny for a while. But you know what? There's some things that you need to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First of all, it's another cold morning. Uh, I can tell you right now in the 40s, without a jacket, it's pretty cold. Uh, so we're looking at things not really changing that much. And oddly, Arizona's getting rain right now, but California's not. So we're just going to have to wait for that high to move along. And until it does, we're looking at highs kind of close to records. I think we're looking at upper 70s today. So the record today is 83 for Sacramento, just for some example. And I don't think we're going there, but we're definitely going to go from the 40s to the 70s, which is a 30 degree jump. Uh, and uh, we're going to be kind of close to records. This is just about as warm as it gets this time of year. And notice the wind. The wind is not a huge factor. However, there is a fire called the Ranch Fire in uh, Tehama County. It's burning in a rural area, but with the northwest winds, that may bring some smoke and haze to the south to some areas like Fairfield, Vacaville, maybe even Sacramento as well. You'll see it, but it doesn't rise to the level where it's an air quality concern. Now back to you, Brittany. All right, at 63, let's get you to work on time. As you head out, we're still seeing a lot of green for the most part. If you're headed out right now, 50 westbound near Watt, we have an accident on the side of the road. Uh, traffic is still moving. Now, an earlier accident was causing a little bit of stop and go traffic on 80 westbound near Citrus Heights. It's on the side of the road as well. So I don't want you to take a detour. It would not save you time. And we're all about saving you time, right? Elk Grove on 99 into Sacramento. We are looking at 18 minutes. Elk Grove, five northbound into Sacramento. We are looking at 19 minutes. I'll update you on all things Davis coming up next. It is now 6.04. A murder investigation is underway right now in South Sacramento. Over 20 shots fired last night. Three people were hit and one of them died. Happened on 42nd Avenue at about 6 p.m. Police say the victims were two women and a man. The man did not survive. Police are not sure what led up to the shooting or who the shooter was. If you know anything, please call Crime Stoppers. Many communities still recovering from those four massive PG&E power shutoffs last month. Now some communities in the foothills are asking you to come out and support them and their local businesses that were hurt when the lights went out. Carlos Herrera back in Nevada City. We almost have to open up a bureau there, Carlos. You've been visiting and talking, getting to know all the locals <laughs> there. What are they telling you? Well, they're pretty upset. They're frustrated, stressed out, and understandably so. That's why you are encouraged and invited to participate in a local event and a campaign for that matter. It's called Let's Go Out Tonight. Really simple. All you have to do is really go out and shop, but do it locally. And you have a lot to choose from here in downtown Nevada City, just like these businesses here. We're talking about shops, restaurants, markets, breweries, wineries. So many choices here because all of these businesses were hurt badly during these shutoffs last month. Now these events happen every Wednesday through the end of the year. And we spoke with these business owners here in this community because we were here often actually. And they told me they lost money in products going to waste, revenue, they had to close down altogether. They couldn't pay to the, uh, their employees. So this is one way you can help in their recovery. Now speaking of those PG&E shutoffs, they were a topic of a conversation in another foothill city, the city council chamber in Auburn 
was packed last night as people wanted to voice their concerns during that meeting. Some also talked about wildfire risk and how some neighborhoods are really in great danger. What heightened my awareness was that uh, catastrophic fire in uh, Paradise. We have 10 acres, 10 rural acres, and I look at some property that's adjacent to us, and it's a thicket uh, that would be very quick and easy to set on fire. Auburn, Auburn Fire Chief Dave Spencer said the city needed to become a firewise community. He also said he noticed that the city wasn't good at planning and needed to do better after those PG&E power shutoffs. But Walt, it's really uh, worth mentioning. We were here just last week talking about how uh, power was restored in all, most of these cities in the foothills, especially Auburn and Nevada City. And you mentioned, you were very specific about it. People need to know that these historic cities, especially downtown Nevada City, is back open and that they need to start spending. This is the people's opportunity to support their local businesses. Yeah, the weather's great. Fall, you know, Apple Hill, Placerville, Sutter Creek, Dry Town, Grass Valley, Nevada City, all of those towns rely on that weekend business. Carlos, good point. Thank you. We will check back. PG&E in the state of California want to prevent more power shutoffs. Just yesterday, top company executives met with the governor and his team in Sacramento. Governor Newsom says he wants PG&E to come out of bankruptcy, a completely different company. If PG&E can't come up with a better solution to prevent fires than shutting power off, the governor is threatening a state takeover. All right, let's get to some other top stories right now in your Daily Blend. Remembering Deputy Ishmael. He was a perfect cop. He had integrity. He was reliable. He was fearless. Thousands of people came out to say goodbye to the El Dorado County Deputy Brian Ishmael. ABC 10 was there as the procession made its way from Roseville to Placerville, the area that Deputy Ishmael called home. The bad guys took one of our best, and this has got to stop. He survived by his wife and three children. He was the seventh local officer killed in the line of duty since August of 2018. Crashing into a Roseville home this morning, police are trying to figure out how a van ended up in the second floor of that house. First responders had to help the family living there get out safely. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, not even the driver. Police don't believe alcohol was a factor. Massacre in Mexico this morning. Officials are saying an apparent cartel attack that killed nine members of an American family, including six children, may have been a case of mistaken identity. The family was traveling through a territory disputed by multiple cartels, and their caravan of cars may have been mistaken for one. Eight young children survived the attack. And that's your daily blend. If you have something you want to share with us, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10.